All right, so Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. In this segment, Lisa just brings garden questions. What's <laughs> What are your neighbors talking about that maybe we can share that would help you in your own backyard as well? So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. You're looking fabulous, my dear. <laughs> fabulous. And you look fall ready. I can see myself oh, on yeah. the camera and I can tell you. <laughs> this great thing about audio, <laughs> the, the terrestrial towers, they can't, all they hear are the voices, but we're, we're starting to do this by video as well mm -hmm. for vlogging or whatever. And right. you, you do have to watch what you, <laughs> how you look more often. <laughs> Allergies still bothering you? They are. Right, we going crazy. I get a little it's, tinge too. I think it's yeah. the wind or the dust or mold i have no idea it's something fall is yeah. in the air yeah. but uh, suck on a little bit of coffee hot tea and it kind of helps i've never had allergies i've lived here my entire life never had allergies till about two years ago yep till it's COVID. Soon. it's COVID's <laughs> fault everything is COVID's fault <laughs> i always tell people i don't have COVID. i promise it's just allergies because i feel fine nothing's yep. wrong but yeah my voice and a cough or well you look fine well <laughs> Okay. To this old guy. <laughs> this is the man who's going blind and wears one contact. <laughs> okay. So anyway, customers, we've had a couple customers in this week and they're going, no, no we, I really enjoy listening to you all, but oh, yeah. you laugh so much that it's hard to follow what you're saying sometimes. So uh, clean it up. <laughs> no, they Sorry. were very kind. Yeah. So we're just having too much fun mm -hmm. on the airwaves. We get a little carried away sometimes. Sometimes. It's better to have fun and oh yeah. And be, be misunderstood than to not have fun and be uh, be understood. Yeah. We don't want to be deep and profound. I think I think Ben Franklin said oh, sure. that. Sounds like or so. Mark Twain. <laughs> you put you put their names on either on any statement. It sounds good no matter yeah, what. It's yeah, it's an affirmation. Yeah. So garden questions, yeah. what are we talking about? Well, so Mark really wants to put a Vanderwolf pine in Love his it. yard. That's great. And he was told, be careful, watch for drainage. They're very sensitive to that. Yeah. So he did a test hole. Took 48 hours for the water to drain oh out gosh. of there. Okay. Wants to know, hmm, what <laughs> do you think? Should I do it? Should I yeah. not? Find another spot. Yeah. So That's Vanderwolf true. pines are, so, so <laughs> pines, pines do really well in Northern Arizona. And then most of the listeners here are tuning in from Northern Arizona. Um, they do not, I mean, they adapt well because it's dry, it's arid, it's bright, it's high altitude, extreme temperature swings, everything that pine trees love. We have it here except for soils that don't drain. And so if it drained within, I was hoping for 12 hours, they go, yeah, go fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You're overthinking this. Two days to get the water out of the hole. That's a lot, especially in, in the monsoon patterns. Yeah. There's two times when we get real wet here. March, the first part of April, you get these real heavy, wet snows that take weeks to, to melt and dis mm -hmm. disappear. You see damage on evergreens then. And the monsoons, uh, August, September, lots of rain uh, consistently, multiple times a week where the whole, you know, you'll get rain more than every two days. And so the plant never gets a chance to breathe. Mm -hmm. Pines don't like that. <clears throat> what can you do for this hole? So, so it was Mark, right? right. Mark, don't plant a Vanderwolf pine in that <laughs> hole as it is. Change it up. Now, what we do is what we, we create in the industry, we call it a chimney. Mm -hmm. We'll take a piece of that hole we'll try to dig it to the next soil band, the next layer of, of earth. Mm -hmm. And you'll see when you're driving down the road, you'll see <clears> these <throat> big earth cuts and you'll see different bands, different right. layers of, of soils. Well, you've got that in your yard too. You just want to try to dig down to the next layer and all of a sudden the plant will start draining. You can take a digging bar, a jackhammer, just, just a shovel and try to dig out a peck out a piece. When you see the soil texture change, test it again. My guess is it will now, now breathe, will drain, plant your hole then. The other tip I can give you, and this is what, what I learned years ago, plant on a slight mound. Mm -hmm. So leave, don't <clears throat> plant, whatever you do, don't plant in a divot, no matter yeah. where you're talking about in Northern Arizona. Don't, don't, don't put it in a, in a hole. That's what they do down in Phoenix where it's 110 degrees out in June and it's midnight. It's just hot. <laughs> so here we, we, we cool down. And so mm -hmm. plants and we get more, much more moisture. So you want the plant, the top of the root ball to be at soil level or even a little above and mound that soil out to be above would be critical for 
this Vanderwolf, or pretty much any evergreen. No evergreen likes soggy, wet soil. And so to leave two, three, four inches of the root ball out of the ground and then take some of this extra mulch, extra soil, topsoil, and then mound some dirt up. So, you, so when you finish, I don't see exposed root, but I see a slight mound. It's tapered, so it's hardly, no one will see it except maybe you, the, the, the gardener. And then put your irrigation on top of that mound. Put your put your water basin around that at the outside edge. And that will guarantee that at least three, four inches of the root ball can breathe. Mm -hmm. That's a game changer. Your mortality rate will drop dramatically mm -hmm. just with that technique. Uh, but but the way it currently is, what the question was posed, took two days for, for my soil. To, should I plant it there? The question is, the answer is no. no. Unless you modify the hole or change it or raise bed or another part of the yard. Uh, so just they're so sensitive to, to yeah. which makes them drought hardy. They're right. tough. They go through drought and hot and heat, low water. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of things going for them, but soggy soil ain't one of them. Right. So beware with that one. All right. Next question is from Don. He says, I think I heard you say to prune lilacs, not to prune lilacs this time of year. Okay. He said, if that's true, my maintenance man didn't get the same information. <laughs> get the memo. <laughs> he wants to know, is there anything uh, you can do at yeah. this point or is the year? So have your wife go outside. <clears throat> the maintenance guys are out there. Have her, have her hold them <laughs> while you can slap them because they just totally blundered the whole thing. There's no recovery at this point. So that is not going to affect the health. Right of the lilac or your spring bloomers. It doesn't affect that at all. It just won't bloom. Yeah. So when they pruned it back this time of year, they cut off the flower bud that's been forming for four or five months. Mm -hmm. Now, is there enough time to possibly have new leaf of flower buds to form? It would be worth a try. I would try it. Or can we bulk up the flower buds that remain? Let's say there were some down towards the heart, <clears throat> the inside of that shrub or off to the sides. Many times mm -hmm. they'll cut back the top trying to get it down and so you'll see these butchered lilacs. They bloom off to the sides and yeah. not up to the top. It looks kind of like, like a Dr. Right. Seuss lilac or something. Mm -hmm. But but what I would do is I would fertilize that with the all-purpose plant food right away, like right now. And then I would get a, a bag of super phosphate mm -hmm. specifically for them. Mm -hmm. Add super phosphate to the fertilizer. Super phosphate 0180, that middle number forms flowers. And so put that on there. Pray for the rain and snow through the winter. And you'll find out here next end of March and April right. whether it worked or how much it worked. or if, and, and what that will do is you'll get great foliage and the few flower buds that are there will, will bulk up and you might get some additional flower buds and then train your, your staff next, train your gardener. Don't you prune lilacs in, in April and May. You don't prune them in November. Come on. Right. Anyway. Probably May. Yeah, that was bad. But yeah, just, maybe you can recover. That's okay. Okay. It'll be beautiful. Just won't blow <laughs> yeah. So Barb would like to know, she had a 10 by 10 patch of wildflowers. That was yeah. beautiful. Of course, it's kind of reached the end of a season. Yeah. She wants to know if she can just take a weed whacker or a mower and go over that. And if now's the time to do it. Yeah, you can do that right now. It'd be perfectly fine. So for our wild, wildflowers, what we're going to do, so I've got a beautiful patch just outside the studio here. Mm -hmm. It's it's way bigger than 10 by 10. Yeah. And it's fun to look out the studio while I'm writing garden columns and, and watch the birds, butterflies out there. It's just magical. Mm -hmm. Wildflowers do really well here. I'm going to leave that patch um, for the birds as long as I can. Sure. I'll probably leave it out there because the cone flowers, the Mexican hats, mm -hmm. the echinaceas, they're all fabulous and great seed sources for right. the birds. Right. Um, and then I'll probably go back and just weed whack that or mow it aggressively. Um, probably in January, February, March, sometime when it just looks so ratty and I've got nothing to do and I <laughs> kind of want to go garden and mm -hmm. it's a nice warm day in January. I'll probably take the mower out there and just mow it or weed whack it. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking of my birds specifically. Good I'll idea. keep it out there for them. Okay. But if you really wanted to, yes, you could do it right now. No problem. Go for it. And so anytime between now and March, prune it back at your at your leisure. Good. Ken Elisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back after this.